Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see lots of important information related to fire hydrant system. A fire hydrant system normally consists of underground piping system which is connected to a permanent water supply like fire pumps and it has above ground high trend access points which are located in the proper intervals along with the street and roadways. Usually from the main line, we will take a branch line for the high trend installation with 6 inch pipe size to limit the pressure drop and also for the higher flow capacity. This branch line we normally call as a riser pipeline. So the traditional fire hydrant contains three outlets, two 2.5 inch side outlets like you can see the left and right side and also a single 4.5 inch or 6 inch outlets. To better understand the concept of fire flow and how that water is provided, we need to understand the NFA1 fire code and the NFA291 recommended practice for water flow testing and marking of fire hydrants. So here fire returns are not required where the water supply cannot deliver 500 GPM of fire flow at 20 PSI. When this water supply is not possible, a fire department pumper may pull too strong a draft and cause a vacuum in the water supply damaging the water supply system. This is the reason we are following this rule. For one and two family dwelling like a housing, the minimum fire flow cannot be less than 500 GPM and for the building other than one and two family dwelling, the fire flow cannot be less than 1000 GPM. Additionally, in residential area with one and two family housing, at least one fire hydrant must be within one, 183 meter of the dwelling. And fire hydrant cannot be spaced more than 800 feet apart from that one. And in areas where buildings other than one and two family dwellings are present, at least one fire hydrant must be within 400 feet of the building and each fire hydrant distance must not exceed 500 feet apart. So NFA1 fire code requires a minimum amount of water to be provided based on the type of construction of the building as well as the fire flow area. The fire flow is defined as the flow rate of the water supply measured at 20 PSA residual pressure that is available for the responding fire department for manual firefighting. In case of a smaller and a non-structural fire, for example a burning vehicle or air debris, the lowest flow rate of, I mean under 500 GPM could be sufficient. So for a multi-story home or multi-upstory apartment building, a higher flow rate is required, like 1000 GPM and more than that one. Some local standard like UAE Fire and Life Safety Code recommends that minimum pressure required for the most remote or last fire hydrant must be 6.9 bar, whereas as per NFA1, it recommends that minimum residual pressure is only 20 PSI. The most effective method to determine how much water a fire hydrant will provide is to conduct a hydrant flow test. NFA 291 provides the procedure for the flow testing. Hydrants should be painted in high visibility colors based on their flow capacity. Higher flow hydrants are typically placed in denser population area where large structure need more pressure and fine flow. To help identify this type of thing, NFA provides a recommended color scheme for all the fire hydrants. So the color refers to the color of the bonnet which is in the top and also cap on the various connection. Based on NFA 291, hydrant classification AA has the color scheme of light blue which has the capacity more than 1500 GPM. A classification has green color which has the capacity 1000 to 1499. Similarly, B classification has orange and which has the limitation from 500 to 999 GPM and C classification has red color which has the capacity less than 500 GPM. Hydrants with the AA classification normally used for the industrial application and A classification normally used for residential purpose and B has the marginally adjugate flow and C has the low flow rate. Next, we are going to see the important components related to fire hydrant. The first one is stem net or operating net. That, that is a vertical stem connecting the open close wall with the operating net. It limits the water passage from the pipeline. The next one you can see here is the breakable traffic planche. During the collision with a car, it is designed to fracture when a 6000 pound force is applied on the side of the fire item. So it is very important to install the breakable traffic planche minimum 2 inch to maximum 8 inch above the finished ground level. And the next one is the bonnet which holds the operating stem nut in place and protects the hydrant from mechanical damage and also the water penetration. It also has the side walls and upper barrel like you see in the video and it is very important that all the firefighting components must be listed for the usage for the firefighting applications. 
The next important thing we are going to see is the type of fire heater. The first one is the wet barrel fire heater. The standard above ground heightened that always has water in its barrel for instant access. These heightens have one or more operating stems which run horizontal at each outlet. This heightened is installed in the place where the temperature never falls below the freezing point. And coming to the important advantage of the wet barrel fire heater is it is cheaper to construct and it has very easy maintenance procedure. The next type of fire heater we are going to see is the dry barrel fire heater. This is normally used in area with the freezing temperature. The valve in the dry barrel model is situated below the frost line, a long vertical wall which runs through the riser to a nut on the top of the heater. Turning this type, this nut allows the water to flow into the heater and subsequently for the fire hose. In the next video, we will see how to design the fire heightened with the correct flow, pressure and bright pipe size. Thank you for watching the video.